of Preventing Catastrophes with GNU Media Goblin by Ben. So please give Ben a warm welcome. Thank you. Hello there. I first met Media Goblin uh, about four and a half years ago. Uh, my wife and I were sitting at a card table uh, surrounded by cardboard boxes full of our, all our worldly possessions eating Thai takeaway and uh, if you've ever tried to eat anything off a card table you know how difficult that is. Rickety and wobbly and up and down. Um, but it's even harder when you're nine months pregnant and you're about to give birth in the next couple of days. So uh, we were eating our takeaway there, um, discussing the exciting, you know, plans. You know, it's, an it's an exciting time and um, we, we started talking about uh, privacy and how we were going to host photos and videos of our new little person and uh, we came around to talking about Media Goblin. So Media Goblin is a, a tool for hacker parents to post photos of their babies. Well, not really, not at all actually. Uh, it's, not, it's not privacy focused at, at the moment currently it's, it's, it's a, uh, and it's not just for hacker parents. It's, it's intended to be for everyone. It's, it's a tool for artists, and, and it's, it's a tool for artists to be able to publish their, their works. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a media publishing system uh, in a gallery sort of format. So you take your work, you upload it into the gallery, and other people can view it. It's for painters, for illustrators, for musicians, for 3D modelers, for people who make guitar effects and want to be able to demonstrate them, and for speakers. Uh, so. The idea is that you can collect and curate beautiful and interesting things uh, based on whatever your understanding of beautiful and interesting might be. It's a Python web application and uh, I'll, I have it running here on my laptop so I'll, I'll give you a little demo and yeah, we'll see how this works. Okay, so this is Media Goblin. Uh, it has a web interface. It's, I'm, I'm running this, this application on my laptop here. Uh, and this is the home page of the Media Goblin site that I've installed here. So I'll log in. This is what you might see as an anonymous visitor. I'll log in. I have an account here. Uh, so I've up uploaded some things here already. Uh, it's the, the, the key difference between Media Goblin and other systems is that it doesn't do just images or just photos or just audio or just other things. It does multiple types of media for the same author. So you can upload all sorts of things here. I'll show you, for example, so uh, <clears throat> these, there's some things here I'll show you in a second. I haven't, I'm going to only upload a couple of things just to save some time. So what we'll do here is, as an author, I'll add a piece of uh, media. Now I'm a extremely passionate free software activist and developer, um, but there are some things that are more important to me, and one of those is cycling. Uh, and this is a uh, <coughs> this is a bicycle. Well, it's a tricycle actually that I own, and I, I take my kids around in a little bit and move other things around in. Uh, so what happened there was I just uploaded that piece of media. <coughs> now nothing actually happened because that's just been uploaded, and Media Goblin has to do some work now behind the scenes to actually produce a a version that you can look at. You know, that might have different formats and different sizes and all this sort of stuff. But if I refresh now. That's been working in the background and it's now published on my Media Goblin site. So this is the box bike. It's really, it's quite a fun piece of uh, gear. You know, it's got a big box in the front and you can put all, you know, put about 80 kilos in the front and cart it around. Um, so it has the normal sorts of gallery type things. So it has titles, descriptions. Uh, I didn't add a description as you saw there. Tagging, you can modify the slugs. You can specify a custom license. Uh, Media Goblin is very respectful of your choice to choose, you know, uh, it could be a, an all rights reserved type license or something more uh, free culture friendly like CC by SA. And you can set a default license too. I'll flick back here. And there's all sorts of other features like um, collections, so you can collect certain types of media on the same related to, you know, Star Wars or whatever you, whatever you like to do. There's reporting features so that uh, the terms of service on your site, uh, if, if there's a breach of the terms of service, someone can report that, that and the, the moderator can, can action that. What else do we have? We have comments, so you can add a comment. 
No. Oh, okay. I can't see it on my laptop. Uh, cool. Where's my comment button? There. Cool. So we've got a comment on the bottom. Uh, so, so that's images. So that that's your Flickr, uh, essentially. So you know, instead of having uh, some web service to do that, you can you can host it yourself. Uh, we we also do. Uh, I showed you tagging. There's a geo tagging feature, so that if you have a camera that's that adds a GPS location to your photos, it'll actually pop up a little map in that this spot here, and you'll be able to see where it is on the map, which is quite neat. <coughs> uh, but as I mentioned, GNU Media Goblin is multimedia uh, ready, so it also does things like audio, and I've uploaded one of those here. This one is an alarm that my son and I recorded to put onto our phone to remind us to lock our Chooks, uh, our chickens, if you're not from Australia, um, or New Zealand, I suppose. Uh, so we have backyard chickens, and if we leave them out at night, the foxes come and eat them. So obviously we don't want that, so we have this alarm on our phone. Um, and we've, I uploaded it here just so we had a copy of it. So as you can see, we've got a nice waveform, like a spectrograph there, and a um, you know, nice media player. Works really quite nicely. So I uploaded that in just a WAV format, and it's converted it to a web-friendly um, Vorbis, web, WebM and Vorbis format. So I didn't have to worry about it. It's a, it's a beautiful feeling to be a, a technical person who has done all this sort of media conversion at one point or another and tried to figure out formats and bit rates and all this sort of stuff, and you just drag it on here and up it goes. It's lovely. Uh, and in addition to audio, it does video. I'll, I'll show you this one because it's next in the line here. So, so that would be your SoundCloud, essentially. So if you're a musician or um, a speaker, I don't know, whatever you might be, um, it does PDF. <coughs> so as uh, someone who speaks occasionally, I like to be able to put some slides up online. This is a great tool because we've got the, the PDF.js feature in here, so you can go through slides. Uh, so you can put up both the video of the, of the talk and the slides. And as I mentioned, oh, so that would be your, you know, um, slide share, something like that. Uh, and we have video, of course. So this is a video of the Free Software Foundation's 30th birthday celebration, which is actually quite fun. So you should have a, have a look at this if you haven't seen it. It's a couple of years old, but still and sometimes really nice silence. animation and it's got a good, good strong story to it. But what happens when the tools we use are obeying someone else? A tool you control... I won't play it all, but that, this is the most compelling use case for me personally. The the video, drag it up and it's there format because um, things like you know videos of my my kids I don't want to put on YouTube and I want to be able to share them with my family and this sort of stuff. But I also use this for talk videos and stuff as well that I that I don't have such a strong privacy concern about. Uh, so, do you think that's all right? Is that think it's useful? Yeah. Well, I'll show you one more thing. Um, this is a. Oops. This I think is the coolest feature so far. Um, one of my friends um, wrote this game. He, he targeted it fourteen-year-old kids. Uh, I guess they're kids. Um, this is a. I won't put the title. This is a three D model. So what you might print in a three D printer. So he, he wrote this game called Cargo. It's about a snail, a post snail who delivers letters uh, in Blender, actually. It's quite cool. So I'll show you. Let's, let's just start it uploading. I'll show you the way this works architecturally. So I have a, a process running there that runs the web process. This is a secondary process that's running in the background on a, a system called Celery, which you might have seen if you do web applications. Um, that's Celery. That, that's Media Goblin talking to Blender, Blender the 3D modeling program. So Celery is just asking Blender to do some conversions of that format, which is interesting. What does that look like? OK, so here's the snail. Here's Cargo, the character of our, of our story. And there's a, from that STL file, here's a render of Cargo the snail from the top, or whatever that is, perspective. So we have a couple of pre-rendered shots of Cargo. And 
here's cargo. We can zoom in, have a good look at cargo. Think that's any good? <laughs> this was this was done by um, uh, Ava Palachek uh, for a bounty. She's she's one of the core contributors to Media Goblin, but uh, this was done for a bounty for a 3D printer by the Lulzbot uh, team. They put in a they put in a bounty for this who who could provide a feature comparable to Thingiverse, and Ava came up with this in a couple of days, which was truly amazing. This this sort of you know complex talking to Blender. Here's your beautiful experience of uploading a 3D file. There it is, lovely. So, uh, I'll flick back to slides if I can. Nope. There we go. <coughs> there we go. Cool. Okay. So, um, so that's Media Goblin, the web application that you've seen. Uh, it's a GNU project, so it embodies all the the, the philosophy of the GNU project, being that uh, it's it's really important that people have um, right to con control their own use of computing in their lives. So uh, it's AGPL licensed, which is a great license to choose for a server-based application. Uh, it now supports Python three of the last as of the last release, and <coughs> you might. You might be quite familiar with the, if you, if you dive into the code, you'd probably see some similarities if you're writing Django. It has, it's not Django, but it, it does, has similar models.py and, you know, routes, urls.py type thing. It's Postgres, SQL Alchemy, Salary to do the back end processing. <coughs> GStreamer it does all the audio video transcoding, which is a fantastic framework and handles all sorts of media types brilliantly. It's entirely pluggable, so you can write your own authentication, media types, um, themes, all that sort of stuff. <coughs> and uh, it has this other interesting feature where it has an API that's compatible with the Pump.io protocol. I'll show you that, actually. <sighs> if I can, if I can find my terminal. There we go. Okay. Whoop. What did I just do? There it is. Oh, wrong monitor. Here we go. Okay. So this is Pumper. Uh, Pumper is a client for the Pump.io social network, which is a second generation free software social network that, that came about. Um, but the, the, the author of uh, StatusNet, which is now GNU Social, um, wrote Pump.io as a successor to status net uh, and just to be clear this this social networking client knows nothing about media goblin it's never it doesn't know media goblin exists as a as a thing but it talks this thing called activity streams json activity streams uh, and now what i've what i've done is i've just connected this to my media goblin server so what we're actually doing is we're not implementing a new social network but we're using an existing social network and we're able to interact with this media goblin server so i can go to this photo of uh, yeah, so I might go, uh, I'll comment on this bike too, why not? Oops. And if I flick back over to Media Goblin, uh, we should see two comments, yeah. Um, so this is really key in that we're not reinventing the wheel here. We can provide full client features, but we don't have to build our own social network because that's not really a feasible thing to do. <coughs> so <coughs> the idea here is that you'll run Media Goblin here as I am on my laptop on a server that you control. That's the point of this. You're not using someone else's centralized system. You're using your own. So this is JSON Activity Streams, which is the client to server protocol, which I just showed you with Pumper. It doesn't really matter what the details are here. It's a JSON blob um, that says, uh, you know, Chris posted an image to uh, of this goblin in this case. Um, <coughs> we know who Chris is because it's a client to server protocol, so it knows who the client is because it's talking to them. Uh, <coughs> has a whole lot of other cool features uh, like command line upload, which I find really useful when I'm uploading a whole lot of meetup 
videos or recordings. You can just specify on the command line. It does bulk upload from CSV if you were, say, running a conference. Uh, and you can actually configure it to, re to, to avoid retranscoding stuff if you've already done your transcoding for your conference videos or something like that. It's all queued up, so there's a nice little system where you can reprocess things if the transcoding doesn't work properly. <coughs> so <coughs> YouTube or Flickr or SlideShare or something like that might be right for you. But, uh, Media Goblin might not be the right choice for you, is so to say. Um, <coughs> if you're comfortable with that sort of hands-off approach and you really just don't want to think about it because you've got other things to think about, which is totally fine, um, you don't care where the data lives, I think that's, that's fine. You should totally choose that. Because, I mean, as an activist, I think the most important thing is that you live by your own values and not mine. That's, that's a really important part of having a comfortable, happy life, I think, is living by your own values. But, on the other hand, we need to acknowledge that we are entrusting these enormous corporations with our precious cultural works. And these organisations have very different values to us. We need to acknowledge that the sacrifices that we make, <coughs> including things like controlling which country things can be seen from, censoring unfavourable media, um, things like uh, New Zealand's uh, political cartoonist Malcolm Evans, uh, his cartoons on the Israeli-Palestine conflict being censored, uh, and say you were a, a punk rock group uh, making music about Vladimir Putin's uh, uh, involvement with the church in his election. There really is no, uh, no free speech without independent media publishing, so we just need to be a little bit careful, I think. <coughs> the other thing to be aware of is that we're th these sort of sweeping DCMA uh, copyright takedown things where essentially, I mean, you might be aware if, you, if you're on YouTube and you kind of have Sony as a keyword in your video, there's a good chance that these auto takedown features will just take you down. And it's on your onus to actually fight this, uh, this process and make sure your, your video is reinstated. <coughs> There's also this subtle effect of these automated popularity rankings. So things like, uh, you know, the stuff that comes up on the front page. These tend to strip the, 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 the diverse and unique flavours out of some of our uh, what we see, and we get this sort of bland mainstream culture. I think that's that's a, a, a sad thing. <coughs> and what will people say in? Well, Python's 25 years old now. What will people say in 25 years about what happened at Kiwi PyCon? Will they say, "I wonder what Kiwi PyCon was like"? I, I wish I could get onto that video, but it looks like it's gone. I mean, I, I wouldn't be the first person to have gone back to have a look at a video, a technical video, and found that that site no longer exists. Uh, these large corporations aren't good custodians of our cultural works. And that's not to say they're doing it deliberately or there's anything malicious in there, it's just that our values are different. And it's not to say it'll be big bang like this. It may just be the slow erosion of videos that weren't popular or videos that the author never didn't hang around to fight the uh, DCMA takedown that occurred 10 years after they, they published the video. <coughs> But the aim of Media Goblin is not to replace enormous hosting websites with enormous hosting websites. The aim of Media Goblin is to replace, is to allow, allow everyone to scale down to a node for their organisation or their household or their community. The idea is for it to be a non-technical media publishing system um, where you can essentially pull this thing out of the box and stick it into the wall and start dragging your media onto it. That's what we're really aiming for here. And now is the right time for this sort of stuff because we have affordable low power hardware. We have, in many cases, fibre to the home or fibre to the node. <coughs> so we can actually afford to start putting stuff in our own households under our own control. And when you control the data, you can control the terms of service, which is great. <coughs> you can make a site that actually uh, respects your code of conduct rather than someone else's. So, Media Goblin is a young but very ambitious project uh, and the whole, as I mentioned, the idea is not to make it just for sysadmins or 
you know, hackers like me to be able to use. We want everyone to be able to use this system. We, at the moment, it's distributed, which means that you can run your own instance of it, but it's not federated yet, and I'll explain what federation is in a second. Uh, we've just released, well, not just, but uh, a little while back, 0 0.9 was released, and that has all the plumbing for this federation feature, which I'm going to tell you about. Uh, but the full user interface for Federation is due in version 1.0, which, which is coming up sometime in the future. It's under active development at the moment. <coughs> so, Federation. Uh, this is the, the modern social experience, the, the stuff we really want to be able to do, like comment on, run our own instance of Media Goblin, and someone else is running their instance of Media Goblin, we don't need an account on every single server. We have this feature where we can comment or subscribe to someone. Let's, oh, an example, say. So this person here might like the media of this person and they subscribe to this, this person. So their, their servers, they send a message to their server, their home server. Consider it like email, essentially. So when I say home, I don't mean a, a server that you're running in your home. I mean the server that you belong to, sort of. Um, you have an attachment to. So this person sends a, a message through their client to their, their server to say, I'm, I would like to follow in the, in the language of activity uh, streams. Uh, this person over here, that server makes a note of the following activity, sends it on to this server over here, uh, and that server will probably send a message also to that person to say that they've been followed. And then that server now knows to pass any messages back when there's new media showing up. <coughs> Similar things work for comments. So once, once there's a following relationship, this server knows that it has to notify back this way when, there's, when a comment is posted or uh, new media is posted or stuff like that. So the, the key takeaway here is that federation is a server-to-server -server feature. So we have the client-to-server feature already. Federation is server-to-server. -server. It's messaging between servers and storage of different states across the, across the network. <coughs> so, uh, activity streams is the way we do this, both for the client to server and this server to server federation. Uh, this is based on the Pump.io social network originally, uh, and this is a, a similar JSON blob that you don't really need to understand, but gives you the idea essentially. So, JSON activity streams is a JSON serialization of this activity. Uh, and it's saying here something like, Chris, uh, the person, posted an image to uh, his followers. And uh, that, that message gets passed around the network, essentially. So it's both a command and a log language. So this is sent, as, sent to Chris's home server as a command, and it gets passed around the network as a log language as well. <coughs> uh, it's, as I mentioned, it's, a, it's a, an existing... Uh, protocol, so we're not reinventing the wheel here. <coughs> One of the other uh, quite ambitious uh, goals of the Media Goblin project is to standardise some of this social web stuff. Uh, so this is a photo of Chris uh, with the glasses and the uh, above above the the lady with the purple jumper. Uh, Chris Weber, core developer. Jessica Tallon, core developer. Uh, uh, and uh, Evan Prodromo up in the top left. Uh, Chris and Jessica are uh, Media Goblin developers and Evan's the original Pump.io author. So they're working in the W3C social working group to try and get activity streams uh, to, the, the successor to JSON activity streams through, as well as uh, another standard called Activity Pub, which is the, the protocol for how these social networks work. So activity streams two is the new and improved serialization of these activities. And Activity Pub is the, the social network protocol, so how, how social networks will work. Um, and they've spent a whole lot of time looking at different social networks and trying to really bring something to the table that's really solid. And they're working super hard and trying to get an implementation out so they can get to uh, recommendation status, which is quite challenging and they've, they're quite time constrained and they're working really hard. So. Um, go them. Um, I, I really hope they can bring it together because their, their tenancy with their W3C finishes at the end of this year. So, ambitious and progressive work. Um, how can you help? 
you could write a plugin. Uh, you could, as a, as a developer, you could write your own plugin to do themes, authentication, um, a different media format that you like, or a feature that you might like, like geocoding. <coughs> you can come and sprint with us. I'll be sprinting tomorrow on Media Goblin, so feel free to come and join us. I'd love to help you get a, get a patch in, and it's quite accessible and easy to do in, in a day, I think. But the more important thing sometimes than contributions, apart, I mean, we really value contributions, is money. Media Goblin has some really great developers, and we'd love it if they didn't have to go and uh, do contracting to, to, to pay, their, pay their bills. We'd love it if these developers could work full-time on Media Goblin <coughs> and build these great features. For example, the Federation feature, uh, Jessica is working full-time currently based on the, uh, the funding from the last campaign. So that, that's an example of how, how your money is being put to good use uh, by the Media Goblin project. So Media Goblin is a, uh, uh, it's, it's, we call it fiscal sponsorship. Um, fiscal sponsor is the FSF, the US charity. Uh, they, they do the administration and the accounting and the paperwork for Media Goblin so that the developers can get on with the actual interesting work. So I'd strongly encourage you to support by making a donation to Media Goblin and also becoming an associate member to the FSF if you're not already. Uh, while I'm here, I'll also give you a plug for the Software Freedom Conservancy. They do amazing work in the free software space also. A couple of little projects you might have heard of. G-Event, Calithia, Mercurial, PyPy, Sugar, Swig, BuildBot, BusyBot, Git, Homebrew, Inkscape, QEMU, Samba, Selenium, Wine. They're, they're the, the ones I thought you might know of. There's a whole lot of other projects. They, these projects have all chosen to share their administration rather than spend their valuable developer time on it. So they, they use Software Freedom Conservancy uh, to do that administration, which is a really great thing. So please support them. <coughs> So, Media Goblin is media hosting for artists. So if you're a pixel artist, you write research papers, you do meetup recordings, podcasts, stop motion video, you talk at conferences, you take photos of food, uh, and, or you're growing your very own hacker baby, Media Goblin is for you. So, go make something amazing and host it on Media Goblin. Thank you. All right, we have time for like a couple of quick questions. Yep. How uh, easy is it to do backups? As easy as it is on any system, I guess. Backups, Media Goblin doesn't inherently handle backups like most systems. It's your responsibility as, as the person running the system to do, do backups, yes. I was wondering, um, does Media Goblin have much support for metadata being stored alongside files? Yeah, so uh, any plugin can add whatever metadata it needs to the database. So photos, for example, have you know location, time, um, the type of camera, all that sort of stuff. Um, 3D models have the volume, the the size, like the the center of the object, all that sort of stuff. Um, is that the type of metadata you were talking about? Or? Uh, I knew it was just metadata, so I wanted to add some as well. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. That could certainly be added. Right. So, last question. So, I'm a, a consulting software engineer and I do user experience development as well. So, I'm always interested to talk to interesting people about interesting projects. So, feel free to get in touch if, you, if you're ever looking to talk. Um, do the media files get served with a streaming protocol? Or is it straight up HTTP? <laughs> Good question. Uh, normally, you would run Media Goblin behind a proxy, such as Nginx or Apache. Uh, it would probably depend on how you configure that proxy as to whether that was available. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so we've got the closing ceremony. And